Hi, my name is Herman Middleton, and welcome to the Protecting Veil YouTube channel, which is all about understanding our Orthodox Christian faith better so we can live it more deeply. In order to do this, I started to produce videos for something I call the Collective Wisdom Project, and today's video is part of that project. In the summer of 2010, I went on a month-long road trip throughout the Midwest and up and down the East Coast, interviewing interesting Orthodox thinkers. The very first interview I conducted was with Father Stephen Freeman, who doesn't need much of an introduction. Father Stephen is the founder and pastor of St. Anne's Orthodox Church in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and writes the very popular blog, Glory to God for All Things. Father Stephen also wrote the book, Everywhere Present, Christianity in a One-Story Universe. So without further ado, I hope you'll enjoy this episode from my interview with Father Stephen Freeman. important things I think people need to know about the church or certainly the thing that I uh, stress the most is that um, there's no one should ever become orthodox uh, or there's no good reason for becoming orthodox unless you actually believe it to be the truth uh, that you like it uh, that you uh, enjoy it although that's oftentimes not the experience that I run across people people come from America come in and they think this is so strange and foreign they have to adjust to it services are longer and that sort of thing but nonetheless um, they need to believe it's the truth uh, simply leaving something else that has problems uh, and coming here because we don't necessarily have those problems is not enough because um, you know, there will be problems here. There always are. And, and so you have to believe this is the truth. Um, now, having said that, it's possible to think you believe this to be the truth uh, intellectually, that you've been convinced of it. And I think there are many people who become orthodox uh, having on some level been convinced uh, rationally or whatever of the, the truths of the faith. Uh, and uh, very often what you see from that is uh, a love of argument uh, because they're still wanting to argue about truth and when I say that you believe orthodoxy is the truth uh, frankly it's something that you really wouldn't want to argue about I mean it's it is it is your heart and it's become it has become that uh, and so you you wouldn't want to um, argue about it with anybody you might discuss it with someone uh, but uh, arguments I remember reading something from the elder Paisius, I think it was, who said that someone could be converted simply uh, by seeing a fox walk by. Um, and it, God is such that, you know, that however way that works, that it touched his heart in a way that he became, you know, he was converted to God. Um, it's not our usual things. I don't keep foxes in our uh, inquirers group, but he was just using an example. It's a great mystery um, how the heart is converted. Uh, but I think it's very important uh, as a pastor uh, and as a priest who was doing some level of, of uh, evangelism and taking the great responsibility of actually baptizing someone, receiving them, them into the church, uh, that's a very solemn responsibility. And so um, you, you, you do it carefully. I think priests have to take time to tell people, uh, you know, I think this is healthy in our culture, we're not in a rush, you know. You, you, you may take time. If you die in the process, it'll be okay. Um, you were in the process. Don't worry about this so much. You know, take your time. And that not only that, but I should also take my time. But I shouldn't be in a rush. I've, I've seen problems you know, in 12 years or in elsewhere where priests simply acted too quickly and you know, wanted to get another member too soon. And you, we, we need to cease to think like that. This is, this is not that. We have all the time in the world. We really do. Um, because, and this is maybe the second thing, not only to believe that the church is true, and this, of course, is, is really primary over that, is, and it sounds, I guess it sounds so obvious that it sounds silly to say it, 
but that it's very important that you actually believe in God. There are um, many, many religious people, and in our culture, uh, 95% or so, according to surveys, say they believe in the existence of God, um, which would make you think that we were virtually living in paradise were it so. Uh, but when you start asking more questions, a lot of that is not people saying that they know God, much less that they know God uh, in Christ through the Holy Spirit. They don't know God as he has been made known to us and, uh, and proclaimed in the Orthodox faith. Um, my first year, even though I had read and studied everything you could get your, your hands on for years, for 20 years, uh, and it had you know doctoral level study in theology, my first year as an Orthodox Christian uh, I think I spent as much time simply working on, not the idea, but on the reality that there really is a God. Uh, that there really is a God. And uh, if I had something to say to, to other priests and pastors, uh, it is, um, you know, believe in God. If there really is a God, then this is his problem. The church is his doing. Uh, conversion is his doing. The making of disciples uh, ultimately has to happen by the work of the Holy Spirit, and that there is a level of patience, uh, particularly in a culture that is so marked by instant everything. There's a level of patience that we have to, to learn how to practice. Um, uh, from my past experience as a Protestant pastor, uh, there was a tendency uh, to want to be able to fix everything, that the priest was sort of a, a resident religious expert and the church he was running was sort of a, uh, almost a religious a club of some sort, like a YMCA with lots of program and things that way. And when problems happened, uh, the, the pastor felt like he was supposed to be able to intervene somehow and fix it. I recall in my Protestant seminary training, uh, we had uh, a series of classes in conflict resolution um, in which everything we were taught was in fact uh, drawn from secular manuals. And um, one of the things I had to learn as an Orthodox Christian, first off, is who am I to say that the very conflict taking place in my church is not a conflict which God himself was allowed to take place? You know, this is, this is part of the Orthodox faith, that God has collected together uh, these personalities, uh, some of them quite broken, all of them broken in some way, and he's assembled us together for the slow, patient work of salvation. And that somebody is having problems with somebody else in the church, you know, may very well be because they need to learn patience. And if what they feel they need is for the priest to go fix that other person, this is a sin. They need to quit that. Um, they need to give it up. That's, if you will, is uh, part of the worst of our culture, uh, to think that everything either can be fixed or needs to be fixed according to your likes and dislikes. Um, I need to be fixed. You know, they, some say the church is a hospital, which is true. Uh, the mistake, though, in coming in is to think because the priest is dressed up better than everybody else, uh, and if the church is a hospital, then therefore the priest is the doctor, which he is not. Uh, Christ alone is the doctor. As we say in confession, uh, take care that having come to a physician, and by that it means Christ, not the priest. Christ is the physician. The priest is sort of maybe head nurse or something, but he's not the physician. Christ alone is. And so um, I think learning patience um, and believing that there is a God and that things that I think, Lord, if this situation continues another day, I think I'll go crazy and maybe everything will fall apart and yet go ahead and live through that day and pray. Pray and pray. And, and pray to God uh, like you actually believe there is one. As a, uh, uh, a monk from Belarus once said to me, he said, you Americans, you talk about miracles like you don't believe in God. Um, and, you know, you have to pray like you do believe in God. And, uh, and learning to do that, to me, um, that's our orthodox witness, that we do believe in God. Uh, we don't have to prove it. Uh, we don't have to have more miracles than the Pentecostals. We don't have to advertise weeping icons. Um, we pray and we believe. Um, 
And because we believe, we can be tremendously patient. Patient in a way that unbelievers cannot be. We can even be patient with sin. Uh, when, it said, when we're told that God is long-suffering, it was specifically with regard to our sin that he's long-suffering. And he's patient, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. And so if, in some measure, not only to learn that as a priest, but in some measure uh, to take the time in uh, the process of the catechumenate to try to teach that, and as much as possible, and it's, you know, it's hard because it takes years to learn patience. It's, you can only learn patience patiently. Um, but to take time with that. Uh, the other side of that is uh, nurturing the virtue of stability. As it said of a monk uh, from the Desert Fathers, stay in your cell and your cell will teach you everything. It's possible uh, to convert and become part of our community here in this parish and to think to yourself, I think I could be a better Orthodox Christian over at that parish or over at that parish. And of course, you know, maybe you could. If someone comes to me and says, I want to go elsewhere, I usually will bless them and say, well, go. Because they don't need my curse, they need my blessing. But they'll find the same thing there they find here, is that something else to try their patience. Because until they learn to stay in their cell, um, they won't find salvation. Stability is required for our salvation. And so, slowly, we learn it. I planned, I helped found this mission in East Tennessee. Um, I'm 57 now. I don't know how many years God will grant me, but by his grace, I plan to be buried here. I don't ever think about going somewhere else. That's freedom. Hi again. I hope you enjoyed this episode from my interview with Father Stephen Freeman. Please subscribe to get notified when new videos become available, which happens every Friday. And if you would, please comment below to let me know what you thought of this video. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.